Welcome. In this video, we'll compare seven NVIDIA GPUs from the RTX 20 and 30 series that have at least eight gigabytes of VRAM to see how they perform with stable diffusion. The contenders are, starting with the darling of the 30 series, the 3080 with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM. Next is the 3070 with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 touted as the efficiency king. This is the kind of workhorse GPU you'd get to run in a farm 24-7. Next is the 3060 Ti, a value play against the 3070. And here we have the 3060, the people's GPU with a generous 12 gigabytes of VRAM to make up for the smallish bit bus width of 192 bits. This gem is sure to outlast the next two bigger siblings. If you're on a budget, do gaming and AI related workloads, then this is the one to get. The legendary 2080 Ti with a strange 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Is it time to be retired yet? The 2070 Super with eight gigabytes and 256 bit bus still outclassing the 3060 Ti in many tasks. And bringing up the rear is the 2060 Super with eight gigabytes of RAM and a solid 256 bit bus. These go for under 200 USD, almost $100 cheaper than the 3060. For this stable diffusion test, it was done with version 1.5 in painting. The same speed and standard prompt was used for all tests with batch of five images with 30 steps. Okay, the first test at half precision, probably the most popular option, has the 38 winning. But surprisingly, the 2080 Ti is almost equivalent at only 1.3 seconds behind. Did not expect that at all. Another surprise with the 2060 Super coming in so close to the 3060 only under a second behind. The gap between the fastest and slowest is only 81%. Next, full precision. Not as popular an option, but this is where the 3080 wipes away the competition, with the next closest being the 2080 Ti at 40% slower. Here the 20 series shows its age, handily outclassed by their respective 30 series. The gap between the fastest and slowest is more than double, with the 2060 Super being 129% slower than the 3080. But again, the saving grace is that most people probably won't be using full precision. Here we have the peak wattage numbers if you're interested. Next, we take a look at efficiency. How much wattage was used to complete the batch of five images? As expected, the 3070 does the best at half precision, but the 2080 Ti is remarkably close, coming in second. Impressive considering it's a flagship with top tier efficiency and performance after so many years. At full precision, the tables turn. The 3080 is a monster again, being absolutely the most efficient, beating out even the 3070. The 20 series cards again do very badly at full precision. For completeness sake, here are the iterations per second for each of the cards. Remember, this number changes according to the complexity of the tasks. So in conclusion, at half precision, the 20 series is essentially equivalent to its 30 series counterparts. So you gotta wonder about the greatest generation leap claim Nvidia made, but okay. For full precision, the 3080 is king in both speed and efficiency, and the one to get if that's your workload. The 2080 Ti is the best value for half precision, and is often cheaper than the 3070 on eBay, but with similar efficiency at 3080 performance. And the bonus is that it has 11 gigabytes of VRAM. If I were buying a GPU, this is the one I'd get. Okay, that's all for now, but check back and I'll be doing more GPU and CPU related stable diffusion videos.